Hi friends, welcome to Stamping with Wow. It's Jennifer Sasaki, your favorite Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I have this cute little um, gift holder. It measures about four, it's four inches wide. So this whole front panel's four inches and it's triangular and each of these sides are three and three fourths. So it holds quite a bit inside. It's held together with this little flap and magnets. And then you could put a gift card in here, some candies, um, a, a gift, like if you had necklace or jewelry, that'd be really cute in here. This could be really cute um, to have on top of a desk. You could get really creative with what you could find to go inside here. I just think it came out really cute. I really love it. So I added this little ribbon tab here so you know how to pull it open. The sides release, um, you could tuck the sides in, but I wanted the sides on, on the outside, so I used magnets to secure them, so it's a little stronger, but it could have all, if we take out the candies, sorry, it was designed that it could all tuck inside, so it's just a three-sided. So if you don't want to work with magnets, the sides are meant to tuck inside as well. Just something I thought was really cute. And now what I'd like to do is show you how I make this. So we'll just fill this one back up with its goodies. And now we're going to make one that could be more on the masculine side. If you're wondering what to get your father for Father's Day and you know he likes a certain candy, or you know he likes something that could fit inside this triangular gift box, then stick around and we'll make one. What we use to create this particular one is we use the Hydrangea Hill Sweet Designer Series paper. And then I used um, the stamps and dies that I used came from our new annual catalog which is, and it's the Encircled in Friendship. I used the bundle, Encircled in Friendship bundle, which is $47.50, and you get the dies and the stamp set. So here's the stamp set that you get, and then what you, what comes with it are these real, really cool dies that could make doilies and things, but as you can see, I just saw that um, opportunity to make um, a die-cutted, vellum cut out for a gift box so i really loved how this came out and the pieces i used was this particular die doesn't cut through the edge you, you have to add this piece to cut through the edge so i use this piece on the designer series paper to get that outside shape and i use this piece on the cardstock to get that cut out and then I used this die to create the basic white uh, cardstock that I stamped on. And underneath is a sheet of vellum that holds it all together so nothing can fall out. I really think it just came out so cute and it's good size to fit a nice gift in. And here are some other of the dies that come with it. I love these kind of dies. They are a lot of fun, um, easy to use. They work well when you're doing photos, like if you're doing a scrapbook page, this is a great set of dies for scrapbook pages as well. And these are called Encircle and Beauty dies, and the stamp set's called Encircled and Friendship. And together, they're $47.50. If you like just the stamp set, that's $19, and the dies are, I believe, uh, $34. $34. But if you buy the bundle, you save 10%. So it knocks it down to $47.50. All right. And if you're interested in anything I'm going to be showing today, this is my store website. Here's the host code, and that's good through May 31st of 2021. If you'd like to email me for an annual catalog or our next current catalog, um, my email is stampin with wow at yahoo.com. Today, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my box from this uh, Hydrangea Hill Suite Designer Series paper and I'm gonna make it more geared towards a masculine card. So I'm gonna be using this um, Simply Elegant Designer Series paper. I just think this paper is really pretty and the colors really set off nicely 
for, what do you know? Father's Day is coming up. So on this paper, one side has a gold foiling, or in this particular case, a bronze, gold, and a white type silver foiling. Like this one has a lot, and that's B side. So these papers are really cute. So once, really pretty, not cute. <laughs> one side of this paper has foiling and the other side does not. So all the A sides would be the foiling and all the B sides would be without. But there's just some really beautiful paper. This is the Simply Elegant Suite. So this designer series paper we're gonna be using today comes in this suite. This suite was designed with this stamp set and it's called Elegantly Said and it's geared more towards um, happy anniversary and whatnot and it comes with a punch. So the bundle, the stamp set, and this really cute punch that makes, I'm trying to find the punch. So they're using it to elongate it, so you can't see the actual size of the punch here, but that's the punch itself. And so together bundled, it's $36.75. So let's go ahead and get started on this wonderful box we're gonna be making. So I'm going to be using, this is basic gray cardstock. So you need one sheet 12 by 12 of the basic gray cardstock and I'm going to use one sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper from the Simply Elegant. And then you're also going to need some acetate. And we're going to need about a four inch square of acetate. So you're going to need those three pieces and the rest of it's going to come from dyes and glue and all the rest of the good stuff. Okay, so the first piece we're going to start with is our sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut this down to four and three fourths. So if, because I'm doing this die cut, I need to cut up my paper. If I wasn't doing this die cut, I wouldn't have to cut this paper. If I was making this a solid triangular um, shape, I wouldn't need to um, cut this paper up. I would leave it in a 12 by 12. But because I wanna add that die cut, I just can't do it when this paper's in its full 12 by 12 set sizing. It won't feed through my die cut machine. So I'm gonna cut this piece down to four and three fourths by 12. So we're gonna use both these pieces. So we're gonna set this one aside for now and we'll work on our four and three fourths first, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to score this on the 12 inch side at four and then we are going to go to eight inches. So basically, we divided this paper up into three sections, four inches wide each, right? And then on our four and three fourths inch side, I like to do a half inch side on this side. So I'm scoring a half inch on one side and I'm just gonna flip it for simplicity and I'm gonna score a quarter inch on the other end, okay? So I have, I have a half inch score on this end and I have a quarter inch score on this end. And this is on my four and three fourths inch side of paper. So there's a half inch, there's a quarter inch, and here's your four inch and, and here's your eight inch, okay? So this is what your paper should look like right now. And what we're gonna do real quick, we'll set our trimmer aside for a moment. I like using both pieces, both types of scissors. I'm gonna use my snips for my small cuts and I'm gonna use my large scissors for my big cuts. So I'm gonna cut right at this score line. I'm on the quarter inch side and I'm going to that first score line on the four inch line. So I'm on the four inch score and I'm cutting up to that quarter inch score. Then I'm gonna rotate my paper to the other side where I'm on the half inch score and I'm cutting on that four inch score line. So I'm just basically starting to open up my paper. Then I like to take my long scissors and I am going to cut straight down this half inch score line right here. And I'm gonna stop right at that first score mark, my first four inch score mark. I'm gonna repeat that on this side where the quarter inch score mark is. 
just like so. I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So here's my quarter inch score line and I'm gonna stop right up to that four inch score line. And I'm going to repeat this on the half inch score line. And I'm gonna stop that again at the four inch score mark. So this is what my paper should look like right now. You can save these if you like to use. If you find a use for your quarter inches and stuff, you can save those. The next thing we wanna do with this is I want to score, I want to fold these score lines that remain. Just really the quarter inch and the half inch. We can score the other four inch pieces later. We don't wanna to touch those right now. This is what we want right now. So now what we wanna do is we need to do points on these two ends. So I have this little ruler. Any ruler that can do a centering is very helpful at this point. But I can give you the measurements for you, which it's gonna be at two inches. So you wanna take, I'll bring you down a little bit, that might help. So this is my center of my ruler. And so when you're doing a centering, if you didn't know the measurements ahead, you just make sure it's equal on both parts from the center. But I know that this is four inches wide. And so I know that all I need is two inches right here. And I'm just putting a dot in here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make um, my points. So there's my dot. I'm gonna flip this and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So again, I know it's two inches is my center, so I'm just gonna come in two inches. But if you didn't know your center, a centering ruler will help you every time. So what we're gonna do, now this is up to you. You can put this in your trimmer, you can cut this freehand, or you can draw a line. So from that point to this corner, we are going to cut. Now I cut without drawing a line, but I'm gonna show you one with a line. So you're just gonna do that. Same thing on this side, you're gonna find that pencil point to the corner right there. And you're gonna just draw two lines and then you can just take your scissors and follow your line. This is when I like to have long scissors because long scissors make it a little easier if you don't want to draw a line. Now, on this side, I'm gonna cut it freehand. So I'm just gonna line my scissor blade up to that corner, and so you don't have to draw a line. So I'm staying at my pencil point, and then I just follow my blade. Now, that wouldn't be possible to do freehand with a pair of small scissors. You need a long blade that can get you kind of lined up in the right direction. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to die cut out an image in the center of this piece of paper, of this cardstock. So when I'm looking at this, I'm aligning it to these score lines. So if that's harder for you to see, then fold them under and then just play with your square. And if it's hard for you to see with these, go ahead and make that fold as well. I'll just go ahead and score those up. So if you want to see it as a, as the final square, then go ahead and fold your paper around. And then what you want to do is you want to center this die cut to the best of your ability. And if you're a, if you don't feel like your centering skills are good, you can always pull out a ruler. So what I'm going to do is just tack it down a little bit with some washi. And I'm just going to take my ruler and see if it looks about even. So see how I'm just a little bit off see like here is my I am about right. So it looks like I'm about even from edge to edge where my die cut is in here. And then we'll flip it this way. And it looks like I'm about even there. So I'm pretty happy with my placement. So I'm going to go ahead and press my washi down a little bit. But remove all these folds you have before you take this through your die cut machine. Otherwise, it'll cut through all your paper. 
And this is considered an intricate die. So when you run it through your die cut machine, run it through at least four times. So this is how I keep my um, brush, my die brush. I just keep it in, oh, and the nice thing is you get this cute little circle. I just keep my uh, die brush and foam inside a old cardboard box. The paper pumpkin boxes work great too. I just had this old box from when I used to color my hair. And so let's just brush through that. And if you have any poke, any dots still sticking in there, you can take your, um, take your pick tool and I just poke them out. Looks like I got a couple of hangers in here, so let me just pull them out. And I think I got everything. So that's the first piece. This is the first piece of your gift box. I can't tell you, I practiced before I did this video and I was just, I kept messing up on just this one piece. I made five of them. That's how many times I messed up to get my original box. <laughs> so this is like a labor of love at this point. Okay, so now this piece is good and we're gonna set it aside for now and we're gonna work with the other piece we had. So this piece, we're not trimming this down, but I wanna make sure that you have everything right. So this piece should measure seven and a quarter, okay? So verify that your other half of your 12 by 12 sheet is seven and a quarter by 12. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna score this at three and five eighths because three and five eighths is the halfway mark between seven and a quarter. So we're just basically folding this paper in half. Then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna score at four inches and we're gonna score at eight inches. So some of these score marks are exactly the same as this. It's this flap we're gonna use to adhere it back to this. It's just, we wouldn't have been able to die cut this out nicely as long as all this was attached together. But see how nice we were able to achieve that? And once we adhere this, you won't even really know it was two pieces. So don't panic, this is gonna be pretty easy. And this piece is much easier to do. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna need to use this ruler, but first what I wanna do is I'm gonna just fold this paper in half. So it's easier, we'll just cut everything once and we'll get twice as much fold. So I'm just gonna burnish those, that fold right there. Then I'm gonna make points just like I did here. But this paper is not four inches wide. This paper is three and three fourths inches wide. So we need a different center reference. And unfortunately, the center reference comes out to one and 15, no, I'm sorry, one and 13 sixteenths. Now I know you guys are all probably looking at this uh, monitor right now and giving me the <laughs> the evil eye. I'm sorry for the horrible measurement, the, fifth, the 13 sixteenths. But that's truly the one half. I can't change it. So I'm giving you the measurement or I'm showing you on the center ruler how to center that. So again, if you have a ruler that can center, you start at the zero where you think is center and then you make sure the ends are even on both sides. And that's how you know you're at your center. We're gonna flip that and we're gonna do the same measurement again. Again, that measurement was one and 13 sixteenths or you do it in the center. So again, you can, I'll draw lines on one half. So we're going to our score line. And if you can't see your score line, which I can barely see my score line, I'm gonna put a pencil mark there. There we go. That way I can see it and there it is. Okay, so when this is folded, I'm gonna go ahead and make you a line. 
So if you're a line person, you're doing exactly what we did on this piece. We're going from the score line, the end of the score line to that center point. And we're repeating it on this side. And if you need, oops, if you need that line to cut, you want to repeat it here as well. And then we're just going to take our scissors and make sure you hold your paper firmly because you're cutting through two layers at once now. And on this side, I'm not going to use a pencil. I'm not going to make a line. I'm just going to cut freehand. But again, you want to do this with large scissors so you stay even. Otherwise, you want to um, draw a pencil line. Now, these scraps, if they're big enough for something you can use, save them off to your side. And maybe you can use them for something else. So that's what we have now. And we are going to go ahead and score all these fold lines. And then we're going to burnish them with our bone folder. I didn't think that. Uh-oh. Not on my score line, I don't think. There it is. There we go. Okay, and then we we'll All right, so then we want to take our bone folder and just crease those folds. Especially that one, because somehow it got off. This paper is really stiff. Okay, so now we have our fold line. So what we're eventually going to do is this is going to come together like that. We'll hide that yucky wrinkle there. Okay, so what we're going to add is some stamp and seal. And, um, for the construction of this box, you can use Stampin' Seal Plus, which is the dark blue one, or you could use tear and tape, or you can use wet adhesive. Any three of those products I would recommend for the construction portion of this. So I'm just gonna run a strip of that here and a strip here. This box is gonna get trimmed down, these, these triangular flaps. So I don't want it up to my edges. Oh, and the other thing, if you want to add the magnets, now is when you want to add them. Okay, so we're going to put tape here and here. And then we are going to figure out our magnet placement. So when we have our boxes folded, the top flap's coming in here. And so we want our magnets over in this area. So we're going to put some tape right there and right here. All right, and then we're going to place our magnets right in here. There we go. So then when we put these together, there. And then just press that together, and the same on this side. Match up the edges where you want it. You want it right on your fold line. Don't let it overhang. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice once we're together is that you have these flaps overhanging. Now this part, you might not like it, but you have to cut, you kind of want to cut a straight line at this point. Um, if I get out this ruler and we take a line, so I'm just matching up this corner. Oh, my nail's breaking. Okay, so I'm going to match up this corner with that corner of the triangle. And what you can do is draw a line and that way you know what you want to cut, okay? So then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut that line off. Because you want a straight edge on your thing. And if you see overhang, okay, I have a little bit of overhang, go ahead and Trim it some more. It's better to trim off um, less and have to trim again than to uh, trim off too much the first time. So if it's easier, use your your ruler and line up your corners and then hold it down and draw a line. Like so, and then 
take your scissors and cut on that line. If there's pencil mark afterwards, just take an eraser to it. Uh, there we go. So that's what you want at this point. All right. Then that's this piece is, oh, shoot. I meant to cover it in designer series paper ahead of time. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get out our designer series paper before we get too far. So what I would have done is before constructing this box, let me do this stuff real quick, is we would have added the pieces of designer series paper on these two panels. We're gonna cut strips. And so this is four inches wide. And this is also four inches wide. So this will decide how, how wide you cut your paper. Either you're gonna cut your paper at three and three fourths, or you're gonna cut it at three and seven eighths. So it depends on how much margin you wanna see of this gray paper. I am someone who prefers um, a less is more margin. So I do the um, seven eighths cut. So I'm gonna cut my paper at three and seven eighths by 12, okay? These panels are three and five eighths inches. So I'm gonna cut my paper at three and a half inches. So I'm going to go up to three and a half and I'm gonna cut two squares basically. Oops. So that's my two squares that are gonna fit on these two panels right here. And we can go ahead and adhere those now and then we can put this portion of our box back together. So let's set that aside for a moment and we'll get these two back together before we have a sticky, gluey mess. Now you can still, if you like Tombow, continue using Tombow. Otherwise you can use the light blue Stampin' Seal because this is for decorative, it does not affect, um, that one's all jacked up. It does not affect the construction. So the light blue Stampin' Seal is perfect for card making, but not good for construction of heavy card stock, like how we're layering pieces right now. So I'm just putting strips of the stamping seal. Oh, I think I just ran out. And you get them to see how easy it is to replace your stamping seal. So you just pop it out of the bag and you Grab it carefully. So, oops, let's stick to my stampin' seal. These two holes go in these two, like so. And that's how you replace your stampin' seal. Can't get much difficulter than that, right? So let's just run it a little bit. There it comes out. Oops, making sure I have seal everywhere. And then we're just gonna lay this guy right in here and then we can just go back to the construction of this box it's much easier to add designer series paper when your um, boxes are flat so that's something i always forget but that's we're going to set that piece aside for now now we have this piece and i'm not sure oh yeah it's wide enough okay so what we want is, this is a four by four square in here. So what we want is this to measure at three and seven eighths. Now this one, you really want it at the three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths because you need it big enough for the other piece of die cut we're doing. So. Remember how we did this die cut and I showed you we need the bigger die cut. So we're using this piece, oh, here. So this die cutted piece is used to cut out, if you wanted this whole thing its own separate piece, you would use both these pieces together and it would cut out this whole image. You'd get this cut out of the paper. But what we want is that to be here 
and we want this to be here. So, well, let's put this guy in here. We're gonna have to kind of center him and then put this guy on top. Try to get that all centered. And then this piece barely fits. See how small my margins are of designer series paper? So that's what we're being careful about right now. So I want to tack that outside frame down in a way that I feel like it's centered without, so I can pop out that guy. There we go. And we're going to die cut this out next. Stick it in here, lay that guy on top. And this you only need to cut through once because all it's doing is a outer circle cut. This just is giving you more of a finished look on your gift box. This you can save for another project. And hopefully we succeeded on this and we don't tear our paper lifting up our washi. And I'll set that aside. And now, hopefully, this lines up pretty nicely. Eh, it's kind of off. But you know what? We can try to play with the edges. It's a little bit better like that. So that's, I'm going with that. I think I did much better than the first one. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue. And I don't want to lift this up too much. So I'm going to put one corner down get it where I want it and then I'll glue the other ones down because with the liquid glue you have a few minutes to move things around if they're not exactly where you want them so there and then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit more on each corner it's always good to have options it helps your project come along better so I don't always love liquid glue, but in this case, I think liquid glue is a good option. All right, so that's, so here's where we're at. We have these and we have these. The other piece we're gonna decorate are these because they're gonna stay on the outside or they can go on the inside. It's your choice. Right. So what you wanna do is we have a quarter inch strip here. Um, I went with a quarter inch for the part that's going to get uh, glue adhered in because I didn't want to, um, my, I wanted this to be four inches. Otherwise these die cuts wouldn't work if it got any smaller than that. So, so that's why we only have a quarter inch to adhere from. And then this needs to stay a half inch to flit, fit inside and stay secure. But now that we're using magnets, we probably didn't need that. But if you're not using magnets, then this would be a good design option. Okay, so we're going to take this flap. If you have any overhang, now I use tor tear and tape. I was going to say torn and tape. Tear and tape because um, it's only a quarter inch. And so this is a quarter inch wide. The Stampin' Sealed Plus is too wide. So you would have a lot of overhang. So I just don't recommend for a quarter inch, not to use stamp and seal. So I'm gonna just kind of get it in there a little bit and then I wanna make sure it's lined up to my fold. So I didn't press it down all the way cause I still wanted to be able to pull it apart. And there that, now it looks seamless. It doesn't look like it was never attached. Like that looks almost like it was a full piece of paper. And then these flaps, so now, as, like we had to trim these triangles, we have to trim these triangles as well. Um, I'm not a geometry person, so I, there's probably a method to getting it to fit right. I don't know it. <laughs> Just going to come out and say that. I'm not. Now, if there's an engineer, now what, what might be helpful is to barely trim the corners of this so it tucks in a little bit nicer but you don't want to trim it a lot because you want it to still be snug so with this pushed in 
that's how you close your box, right? So now if you look at your um, triangle, you have all this overhang. So all I'm gonna do is take these um, snips and I'm gonna push them up against my box and I'm just cutting off this overhang. And if you still have overhang, come back and cut some more. So then I'm gonna hold, keep holding it together and I'm gonna cut off this overhang. Unfortunately, I don't know a better way of doing this, but I know you wanna get rid of that overhang. And then when you look at your angles, if it looks wonky, just come back in and trim it a little bit. I, I have a little shaving right there. So I'm just gonna come back in and trim that a little bit. There we go. And same on this other side, because you're gonna have the same kind of overhang. So just ensure your paper is exactly where it would be, your cardstock, ensure it's all the way, your box is all the way closed. And then just come along and take your trimming blades, your snips, or your big scissors. The snips are probably easier, or any kind of small precision scissors, so that you get that straight edge. A little bit of fold issue right there. Same over here. We're just gonna, put, I'm just cutting it alongside the edge. And then I'll look at it again to see, I knew that one had some unevenness and I'm just gonna come in and clean that edge up. Now this fits pretty good. So I know there's probably some math to these angles, but come on, it's just paper crafting. We Paper crafters aren't gonna sit out and compute these angles, right? We're just gonna do what I did and trim it along. Okay, so next we've gotta do our magnets and we're gonna cover these side flaps. But pretty easy box, huh? Okay, so let's add our acetate. So like I said before, this is a perfect square in here. It's a perfect, not, well, perfect for a paper craft. You're not perfect in the world of perfect. So one tip I wanna say is when you're cutting acetate, you do not wanna use your regular cutting blade. Get Pull out one of your dull cutting blades. So I'm removing my good blade and this is one of my old blades that I stopped cutting cardstock with because it started tearing it. It won't tear the acetate, but if you use your regular blade to cut acetate, it'll instantly dole it because acetate is thick. So I'm just going to cut this at three and seven eighths again. I'm because I would say three and three fourths, but I think that you might run into some of these holes if you're at three and three fourths. So I don't, I'd rather you do it at three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So it's going to be a three and seven eighths inch perfect square. And again, the tip is remove your good cutting blade, put in an old dull one. And that's good also for when you're cutting chipboard. Use your dull blade. And what you can do is if you have a paint pen or something that leaves that leaves a permanent mark that won't rub off, like a permanent markers will rub off. But if you have like a handy paint pen, put a dot on here or store them in a place you know where you keep your dull blades. I keep mine in a little drawer off the side of my desk or my worktop workstation and then I know where my dull blades are. So with this square we're just going to stick it in here and I'm just going to use some stamp and seal plus on each corner. I I want it stronger than the regular stamping seal so that's why I'm using the plus because I don't want this piece of plastic to come out. And then hopefully your plastic is not dirty. I'm gonna just take a dry baby wipe and rub on it and make sure it's not dirty. Clean off my tabletop. Because once this is, is it adhered into your box, it's, you know, your box becomes dimensional and 
little harder to use. So all you want to do is make sure no edges are sticking over. Right, move that around. And we'll just rub in that center part. There we go. Okay, so now the, the trickiest part of this box. I know, this box isn't that bad. It's actually really pretty easy and fun. The trickiest part is not the magnets. It's gonna be covering these triangle pieces. So let's, this magnet is free. The other one, remember we sandwiched in between these other two triangular flaps and we just let that magnet lay on there so we know the polar side of it. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a piece. I like to use tear and tape. I wouldn't use wet adhesive for this. You could use um, stamp and seal. And we're gonna just remove the paper backing from this magnet. And this magnet's not gonna stay on this piece of paper. It's gonna adhere to the paper that we're gonna lay on top. So I'm just removing my paper backing right now with a little bit of difficulty. So let's twirl that so it's like that. And when I lay this on top, now the magnet's gonna stick over here. And that's what I want. And now not only is it gonna stick over there, it's gonna stick in the right place it needs to. Maybe that's off a little bit. It's gonna stick where I need it to, to keep the box closed. And we're gonna do that one more time on this side. So we're gonna put a piece of tear and tape on that magnet. And you wanna put it on the end, the side that's not meeting up with the other at magnet because you, you wanna to try to keep the two magnets, um, you wanna reduce the layers between them as possible. You wanna keep that always minimal. Otherwise your magnet may not end up being strong enough between three layers of paper type of thing. Okay, so, and there we have it. So two magnets. Now all we're gonna do is cover these two triangular flaps on the both sides, and then you won't even see the magnet. Okay, so what I did, if you were designing this yourself, I have the measurements for you, but I took this, I measured everything you could. So this triangle is, three and one fourth, but I dropped it down to two and seven eighths. Two and, I'm looking at my ruler, my markings, two and seven eighths. And then what I did, because remember we want a margin around our paper. So this is, you want to measure all the sides of your triangle. So this is, the paper is originally four inches but we don't want it to be four inches. And when I measured out how the triangle worked the best, it was two and, I'm sorry, three and five eighths. So I'm gonna cut my triangle three and five eighths by, I'm gonna cut a strip of paper three and five eighths by two and five eighths, but I'm gonna cut a whole strip of the paper so that we can get all four triangles from it. <laughs> so we want, this paper to be two and seven eighths wide. And we're gonna do the whole 12 inches. Now, if your paper is directional, this paper really isn't directional. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're designing something like this. Um, and you would have noticed it already cause your directions would have been off. So on these triangle pieces, it's definitely easier if it's not directional. So we're gonna cut this strip and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna proceed to get our triangles. So we want, um, we want it to be three and five eighths. So from this strip of paper, we're going to measure out, let me get a pencil. The only reason it's gonna be this difficult is because I'm trying to conserve, I wanna get all four pieces from this one piece of triangle if possible, this one piece of sheet of paper. So at three and five eighths, 
I'm gonna mark it and I'm gonna cut it. What was three and five eighths halfway? So let me mark over here. Three and five eighths would be that. And then we're gonna have to figure out the center so that we know where our point is. It's probably the, yeah, it's the um, one and 13 sixteenths. So there's my center. So if we were going from here to here, and we went from here to the end, and if we cut that, I'm only cutting one right now because I want to make sure those measurements work. They worked on my last box. That's where I'm pulling these measurements from. But just want to um, double check. So on my box, we're going to take one of these flaps. And that's just the wrong side. That's the wrong side. And this is the correct side. So am I happy with that? Yeah, I'm not going to complain. I like that. I'll live with that. So that's what you want. So I do think that the three and seven, the three and five eighths could go up to, I mean, the two and five eighths could go up. No, I think the, the three and five eighths could go up to three and three fourths. So let's try a three and three fourths this time. Oh, it might change our point. Oh, we'll see. Okay. So, again, with the three and three fourths is right here. And then if we, so three and three, half of three and three fourths is one and a half is half of three. And then three fourths is a quarter and an eighth. So it would be one and seven eighths, I believe for the halfway point. Yep, because that's where my line is, so. All right. Oh, is that right? No, I think I need it here. And I think this point has to move. Maybe not. All right, so then let's try drawing a line and see what happens. There we go. Let's cut that. Now, once you know the measurement you really like, you could make a template and just cut them. You could just lay this one down and cut it um, the other three sizes, but you wanna get the one you like first and then go from there. So I definitely like this a little bit more. So I'm gonna finish with this piece. This is my long end, so maybe you write bottom on it, on the back side, so that you don't mess it up um, when you're cutting these angles. So I'm just gonna lay it on top and use it as a template. And I just need one more, unless I want to recut that first one, which looks like I have space for it, so I might cut two more. And just make that other one look better. There we go. And I would use the same triangle for all the pieces that you're cutting if you're using a template just so that if any of your other cuts got a little wonky, not all of them keep getting wonky, so to speak. All right, so now we have this. And that's gonna be all we use this paper for. So how much did we have left over? About five and a quarter. So you used one sheet of 12 by 12 and seven, no, uh, six, six and three-fourths 
of the designer series paper by 12. So that's not too bad. So then you just want to measure. Don't get nervous if one side's off. It might be your paper needs to turn because remember one, one edge is longer than the others. So this is it. All right, so we're just gonna, you can use glue, stamp and seal. I'm just gonna use wet adhesive because it's a weird angle. And I wanna cover that magnet. There we go. And then you just want to measure your other piece to make sure it's going to work. And we'll just cover that. Again, if you want to tuck these sides into your box instead of doing magnets, then you don't need to cover these two sides, the insides. It's because we're hiding the magnet that we are covering these insides. I see some pencil mark on here. I want to get rid of it. And now I have Tombow on there. There we go. Okay, and then we're just going to do these other two sides. Like so. Okay, and last piece, look for that, like that, and we'll just adhere it. I mean, overall, it looks, the. I think the box is pretty simple for how good it looks. There we go. And then when we put this box together, We'll tuck that tab in. And voila, you completed the task. Now we can decorate it. And I was thinking, since we were thinking about giving it as a Father's Day gift, I was going to, I have these die cuts that do holidays, the words, and has Happy Father's Day in here. These are in our annual catalog as well. They are called Word Wishes Dies. And we'll just look for, I think that's happy. So that's happy. And then we'll just look for father. There's father and day. And we can put those in some nice foil. Um, maybe the copper, whatever color you like of the foil that we have. I'm thinking copper. Or maybe it's called bronze, I can't remember. Let's see. And put them over here. That one, the smaller piece. I don't know if these will fit on there. Will they? Oh, not, maybe not happy. Okay. So, let's do a big piece. And then what I like to do on these word dies, but if you forget, don't worry. I like to use our um, adhesive sheets because this, I, otherwise you gotta stick some glue down and try to get it on what is here so i'm just laying this out to get an idea how much adhesive i want on here because i i'm frugal i'm frugal with my adhesive maybe i can do day on there no the d won't fit with the y is that one wider no okay so we'll just have to do something like that all right so if i take this oh i didn't need to do that if I take that piece, I could probably get my father and day in there. All right, let me go ahead and stick that on. So this is um, just little adhesive sheets. And what's nice about them is when you're die cutting like this, 
you can just place this down. You have to do it before you die cut. That's the part that messes me up every time is I forget to do it before I die cut. Because once you die cut, you can't get these sheets on there. And then you just, um, just gonna cut a little bit. I can go that way, it's fine. And then when you die cut, you're making like little stickers. So it's pretty cool. They are very sticky though. That's so you want to try to keep your fingers off this stuff because it is, it's like gentle sticky. So if it's it, like your fingers can pull off the adhesive or if it touches anything, it'll pull off the adhesive. So I'm just, I just wanted to minimize how much of this bronze copper. <laughs> So we're just gonna lay that down. I'm gonna put my happy over here, my father. Mm, shoot, maybe I could do my happy here and do my day. I'm trying to remember how far up I have. Oh, I have all the way up to here. Okay, so I can do, Put day sideways. I know I have enough. And put day sideways, father. I think so. Let's put father here. And then we get the happy. It's going to work. Let me see. Everything on top of the foil. And then I just hold it pressed down so it won't move while I'm trying to get it in the embossing. Now this I will run a few times because again this is like an intricate die so run it like four times. And it's going through, the foil is a little thicker. It's like thick but soft and it's going through the sticker sheet. So there's just a little bit more to it. Let's take those off. So oh, that happy's totally not sticked. My father's isn't sticked either, but that's what you do. And then it's just sticker paper right here. So I'm fine with that and that's going to give us some cute, um, but I still wanted something here. Like last time I did, um, the one shape, did I pull, I hear it. There it is. So I'm wondering if that's, this is the same shape, but I'm wondering if that's going to be too small. No, it'll probably be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and cut, die cut this shape out again. That's what I used on the first one. I was thinking I could use this same piece of paper, but no go. So let me get a new piece of paper. Not paper. A new piece of cardstock. And we will again all right um so i guess we won't stamp on this one because i want it to say happy father's day so what we will do is while before it's mounted onto our box let's go ahead and on the fa happy father's day so we can play with it a little bit let's go ahead and poke out all our little dots this one i only fed through once but you probably could have fed it again and those dots probably would have came off on their own 
So I'm going to poke out the dot of my E. Now this, since it's all on a sticker paper already, and my backing did not come with it, <laughs> you just want to be a little bit more careful. There we go. So Fathers is going to go in the center. So I think we would do it like that. And I want Father to come at an angle. So we have that. And we're going to go with happy. There we go. And we're only going to get a little bit of happy adhered to this. Hmm. I think I did it like that before. And we're going to put day. And the nice part about this, um, this one that, so what you do is this, backing state on this one so you just you know get a pointy thing in there like you take your pick tool and get it away from the release paper and then we'll put something like that on here but what's nice is you're not sealing these bags up so that you can fill them anytime so you could have this ready to go and then you get your gift and let's go ahead. I was going to pop it up, but these this happy is really tacky still. A lot of it didn't get covered. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it down. And I'm just trying to... Oh. <laughs> I need some adhesive right there. Let's use some Stampin' Seal, the light blue one. That should be enough. And we'll just... Line up the dots. There we go. And there we have Happy Father's Day. I think my day is crooked. So let's look at that and we'll redo the happy. I'm not happy with that. Ha, I'm not happy with the happy. So we got father here. Let me straighten that out. Let me get my take those. I want that F out. So it kind of fell under my doily. There we go. I want to make sure I'm using the same, or maybe I won't do an angle for a day. There we go. And we'll put happy right here. And I'm just going to rub a little with my um, plastic end of my take your pick tool to help press it down without marring the foil. Oh, you know what? I forgot. See what's nice about it not being all dimensional? And you can open it. And we're just going to press that down a little bit more. Fold that in. And that could be done. And then what I was thinking would be cute, we can add um, a ribbon to the top, is uh, I was thinking would be cute is, sorry, I keep repeating myself. We have two choices. We can go with gold or we can go with this, what is this called, shimmer ribbon as the flap to open it. I think I like the shimmer ribbon. Um, I'm still trying to think what I was saying. Now I, oh, a gift, a little gift card to go with it, right? So let me use some glue dots to hold the two ends together. I'm just making like a little tab pull. Not a tad pull, but a tab. <laughs> so let's um, see if I made it long enough to come over. Yeah, okay. Last time I didn't make it long enough to come over here. So, and this I want, I think I'm going to do a glue dot again. All right, so I'm going to have it come here. And then when the box is Oh, I didn't get the, <laughs> what happened to my piece of dot? 
pull it there. Oh, we probably need two adhesive dots. One for the top as well, otherwise it might not stay out. There we go. And then when you pull it, like you have it, and you pull it open. So I guess you do see some ugliness right there, but I don't think that there's just sometimes there's some ugliness, right? We could um, cover up that part, but I don't think it's, I don't know. You can leave a comment below telling me if you think it needs to be covered up or not. All right, so that is, too bad I didn't create this before Mother's Day, then I could do the two mother, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Isn't that pretty? I think that came out so pretty. Um, and you could easily make a little three inch card to, to go with it, you know, like a little three by three card. I think these are adorable. And I do, I think they're very roomy inside as far as holding a, a nice gift in here. Definitely more candy than you want, but you could still fill this thing up with like a whole bag of like the miniature chocolates or whatever their favorite candy is. You could easily fit a nice piece of jewelry in here. Um, I, I just think these came out so cute. I love this. I love it. I love it. I hope you enjoyed watching today and I hope I have inspired you to try to create these triangular boxes. And if you do, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear how it turned out. Um, thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Bye.